I'm Jim. And I'm Frank. And I'm Jerry. And this is the JFJ Conspiracy Podcast, where the shop talk is rock. Uh-huh. Episode Indeed. 148, guys. Oh, boy. Yeah. Let's do Getting this. so so close to that 150. One yeah, we are. Yep. We're getting there. Right off the top, you notice Jim's shirt. You notice I've got an Eddie shirt on. We just want to make mention the original singer of Iron Maiden, Paul Diano, passed away at the age of 66 today. And his voice, uh, whether you loved it or you didn't, is what rushed in that uh, new wave of heavy metal back in 1981. And the band, of course, saw stellar heights after he left those first two albums iron maiden and killers cannot be denied two of my favorite records of all time uh i'm in the i'm in the love it camp yeah and, and i think and, i think he sounded great live oh yes yeah, he was fantastic i mean recorded i never saw him with paul but you know yeah made in japan and other uh live videos and things like that no, I think it's interesting. Fantastic. A lot of uh, critics and reviews and things like that thought they were almost a punk band because they played so fast. And yeah. uh, his style of singing, because he had that deeper voice, and uh, they were straight metal to me. Yeah, I, I think there were a few uh, kind of crossover bands at that time. I think Maiden was one. Certainly Motorhead. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe well before, a few other of those new wave of British heavy metal bands. Well before thrash was a thing. And uh, right. They were there speeding it up. Unbelievable. Uh, so, whatever you want to say about that early version, highly, highly influential. Oh, yes. To this day. That dual guitar attack. Oh, yeah. Steve Harris and his bass. Uh, yes. His plane is emulated today by many. Just amazing. I saw them two weeks ago, and they still bring it live, man. That's they were great. so good. I bet. Dickinson, yeah. just amazing, uh, amazing front man. Uh, crazy energy uh, live on stage. Um, guitarist a little more sedate these days. I don't do a lot of running around. Steve Harris is still, like, sprinting across the stage. Something else. <laughs> At whatever his age, six, 67, I think, something yeah. like that. I, my I, knees aren't that good anymore. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I start wheezing just watching them play live. Uh, uh, yeah, great, uh, great, still great live, man. They sounded fan freaking tastic. Cool. All right, uh, I want to make mention right here. Um, the G stars. Yes, uh, I, I was talking to Minnie the other day, and he had informed me that he retired back in December. I was uh, not oh, wow. from music. But from the uh, the workforce, the work yeah. Work, yeah. I, I wanted to give him a, a total tip of the hat. He worked for 32 years for Driftwood Dairies, yeah, uh, delivering milk, getting up at the uh, butt crack of dawn <laughs> to make sure the kids at the schools got their milk. Yeah, I think yeah. like up up at three four a.m. start something like that. Yeah, you know? sounds about right. And I had to laugh at him because he said now that he's retired, of course he's trying to he's still getting adjusted to his time off. He says yeah. he's getting he's putting on weight. Which I think that <laughs> would not funny. hurt that guy in the league. It would not hurt no. that guy. No. <laughs> yeah, he he will forever be mini in that. Still, in that still, ex, still. Congratulations, expert. congratulations, mini. Yeah, thirty-two years of a, of a great job, providing a great service. Yeah, uh, just fantastic. So, you may hear his name and mine later on uh, in a few episodes down the road. Um, trying to work some stuff out. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So, Anyways. And he's uh, currently recording some new G-Star stuff, I believe. Very I think good. I saw that, yeah. Right now at John Cash Studios. Very good. Yep, I may be making a visit down there real soon. So Nice. Yeah, yeah. we'll see how yeah. that works out. Yeah. All right, let's jump right into some new music, Jerry, shall we? Yes, Jim and Frank. Uh, the artist's name is Matt Jackson out of Houston, Texas. The album is called Turn It Up. 
the single is Mine All Mine. Uh, it was recorded March 7th or released uh, March 7th, 2022. And folks out in Conspiracy Land, I want to say right off the bat, there's a couple of Matt Jacksons out there. Get the one from Houston, Texas. That's our boy. Um, he can be reached in it. He, he sent us a bio and thank Matt. Thank you, Matt. But I'm going to trim it just a pinch for the show. But folks, if you want to see it, it's really interesting. Bio mattjacksononline.com. Uh, musician and audio engineer. That's specifically what he, but uh, this little bio uh, grew up in Houston, Texas, where music was diverse. His parents, their friends and family all listened to artists like Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, Bee Gees, Andy Gibb, the Commodores, Mac Davis, Kim Carnes, and many more. It wasn't until 1979 and a visit with his uncle that changed his life forever. Matt states, I remember it like it was yesterday. I sat down and listened to Destroyer and I knew I wanted to be on the cover. Just like us. <laughs> Just like us. Yeah. Uh, all, all songs written, arranged, recorded, mixed, and mastered at Matt's home studio. Matt plays all instruments, all vocals. Again, Matt Jackson out of Houston, Texas, folks, with the song Mine All Mine. And Jerry, just before I play it, I want to say yes. Matt got back to us right away. And he before did. we even set up when we were going to have him on the show, everything, subscribe to the channel, follows us on Facebook. Yeah. yeah. And, got back, and 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 spread and he the word rocks on it. His and he and he rocks it. Yeah. And you will not be disappointed. Here we go. All mine by Matt Jackson. Jim, what do you think? Uh, great riff. Love the bass line. Could 
Do you that? Maybe been a little higher in the mix there. Yeah, more prominent. It was undercover. No, I'm a little biased, but yeah. <laughs> uh, great song structure. Uh, very well recorded. Um, loved the solo because um, beautifully tasteful. Didn't didn't need to be super noty, but it was just enough to set things off. And a fantastic outro and. Knows how to end a song. Knows how to end a song. Yes, sir. Right. That's, a, that's a lot in a few sentences. <laughs> I, I really appreciate his singing ability and the way he recorded his voice. He's got it I all. love the delay. It was so tasteful because when Ooh. he finished the sentence, you still heard it, but it wasn't so prominent that it was in your face. It was just nicely done. But yeah, any anybody that, that's in multi instrumentalist and and singing everything and that, everything and being Whoa. an audio engineer, he yeah. nailed it. Just nailed yeah, it. Yeah, he absolutely did. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Absolutely. And, and again, you can catch him on, on social media. He's on all social, all platforms. And again, folks on Conspiracy Land, make sure it's the Matt Jackson from Houston, Texas. And you can get the entire bio at mattjacksononline.com. Right. Thank you, Matt. Thank you very much. That was yes. that was wonderful. Yes, and again, thanks for the subscription subscribing yeah, and following and all that good stuff stick with what us you, yeah we appreciate yeah. that 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 means Solid. more to me than almost anything else that's great I, I love getting the emails and the feedback back from the bands but when they subscribe yeah. and then they stick around and then a couple and they of watch the things, show and yeah, yeah it's great that's great it. thanks matt all right now jerry this last episode you picked Mm-hmm. Your top three Tom Jones songs. I did, man, and you you, you had a good reason. Uh, uh, our friend Jeffrey Brenneman did take Jeffrey him on Brent, yeah, yeah. to see Tom Jones live. What is he? Eighty four years old and still belting so. it out. And he can still sing. Oh my goodness, man! Um, why don't we talk about your top three favorite Tom Jones songs? Well. Uh... Kind of the hits. I always, I've always liked. I can remember, like in this when I was a kid, it was "What's New Pussycat." Yeah. I've always liked Delilah, even though mm-hmm. it's, uh, you mm-hmm. know. And I found this out. It's Tom Jones singing, but it was "The Art of Noise" featuring Tom Jones, oh, yeah. and he and he redid that print song "Kiss,", Kiss. Yes. which I absolutely love his version. Yeah. So technically, it's still Tom Jones. I was wondering, you know, why I couldn't find it on a Tom Jones album. Then I remembered "The Art of Noise," but yeah, those are my. Favorite three. What's new pussycat for sure? Delilah. I remember as a little kid, not right. knowing what the story was. I just liked the way he was singing it. Uh huh. And then uh, yeah, kissed with art of noise. It's oh just, yes, it's just did fantastic. A, did a great video for that as well. Yeah, I think that's probably where I first. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So yeah, me. Very good for me. It's funny. I I right off the bat, Delilah came to mind when you mentioned Tom Jones. Yeah. I was already singing it in my head. I love yeah. that song ever since I was a little kid. It's it's a very you know Weird. wine drinking fun song to sing, especially when you're drunk. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Get her. The second song, uh, she's a lady. That was in the yeah. That was in the mix. Yep. Yeah. And the only song that was a little off, just a little bit, and strictly because of his howl in the beginning of the song, is if I only knew. And if you're familiar with the song, it's a little bit more upbeat. But man, he must do a 30 second yell at the beginning of the song. Oh wow! Just amazing, and just to show you what a strong voice he had. Yeah, still. So those are my top three. And what about you, Jim? Uh, I'm a little boring. I I went pure nostalgia. Okay. <laughs> uh, it's not unusual. Mm-hmm. Yep. What's new, Pussycat? And I think my my number one. Uh, she's a lady. She's a lady. great yeah. vocal delivery on yes. that. Yeah, and and I wrote down a honorable mention. Honorable, honorable mention. mention. <laughs> since it was Jerry's pick, I went on honorable mention. Right. But he already mentioned it. It's it's him with our art of noise and their cover of uh. That's so great. Yep. Great and, great vibe on that song. I thought they did a great great cover of it. I remember when that came out, and that was what late eighties, oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. I thought he was, I didn't know he was still alive then. Right? Yeah. <laughs> and, but yet, yeah. I remember hearing it and like, oh, Tom Jones, what a, what yeah. a cool cat. What a yeah, cool cat. Yeah, that dude's Mr. Yeah. Cool, for yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Well, Jim, you'll have the next pick. 
in the next episode. So keep that in mind. But right now I want to play some music. Uh, the band I have for you is called the strange ones. They're a garagey punk band out of Oakland. I like the name already. Oh yeah. The uh, you'll even love their songs. Two minutes long. You'll even love that. Uh, the album is called attack of the strange ones. And uh, the song I'm going to play for you is called bad news. And all I got out of this, and I talked to these guys, and I, I empty headedness never asked for a full bio, but I got Ruben Rios on drums on this particular track. Israel Branson and Paul Ehat uh, wrote the song. That's all I know. But I will well, say, some of them are, are short bios, yeah. You're going to hear the song and then you're going to want to see them live. And I'm going to tell you on November 2nd, they're going to be at Little Hill Lounge in uh, Berkeley. On the 22nd of November, Golden Bull in Oakland. And then uh, in December, on the 21st, they'll be at Hotel Utah in San Francisco. You're going to want to catch them live. This yeah. is The Strange Ones with Bad News. Strange ones, loud, brashy, garage, lo-fi, punk rock. What'd you think, Jerry? Oh, that's mind blowing. That's that's crisp. I I feel like I did twenty push-ups. Yeah, that is just awesome. I mean, I, I love the backing vocals, that fat bass drum, great lead vocals too. Guys, right. guys, no slouch. He can sing, but that was just full throttle. I love that. Yep, I love that. Great. My gosh. Jim, what about you? Uh, two minutes of perfection. Yes. Uh, there you go. It's, it's so well written and so well executed. Oh. And, and I also love that little background vocal tag in there. It was so nice. Yeah. Uh, subtle. Right. Right. It's like a subtle little touch in there, but it's it was perfect. Man. And they know how to end a song. They do. Yeah. <laughs> what, I, what I really enjoyed about this song is it sounds like it's going to go off the rails oh. and then they pull in some chords for a cool chorus and then it goes right back to it. You know? Yeah. That it's fantastic. Nice. That was nice. You can catch them on Facebook and uh, their music's on Bandcamp and a few other places you can check them out. I'll have a link in the bio a little bit later on the show. All right. Moving on. Holy moly. Jerry also had the classic pick for an album. Mm -hmm. And what, what did you pick there, Jerry? I picked Big Bam Boom by Holland Oates, 1984. 
1984 it is. And I like the re-listen on that, too. I've forgotten about a couple of those tunes. Wow. That was an in-your-face record. Yeah. That thing is mixed so mm -hmm. brash. It's just yeah. unreal. Very keyboardy. Yeah. I, I was used and read, you know, used to their R and B music, um, mellower tunes. Mm -hmm. And it's like they watched Miami Vice and said, We're gonna do oh, something. Oh, that's that's beautiful analogy. That's it. Because this was just uh what 40 minutes or whatever. Keyboardy. Yeah, all in all in your face, uh yeah. Stuff I I have one tune that I wish I never heard and I never want to hear it again, but we'll get to that a little bit later. Yeah. But um, this this was what would you say, Jim? Their twelfth album, twelfth, their twelfth record. So they were due for a change, I guess, in direction. What do you think? What I think? Yeah. Uh, to me, this does not. Sound like a Hall and Oates record. Sounds very much like 1984 R&B on the radio. It wasn't. It wasn't signature Hall and Oates. Oh, it was quite different. No, it was a departure, and they admitted that. Uh, Out of touch to me is sort of the signature, and that was the single, right? And did great to me. That's that's kind of a signature Hall and Oates song. Uh, everything else was a little too keyboardy for me, but I loved I loved the closing track also, uh, "Possession Obsession." You like that? Yeah, really like that. Uh, John Oates sings that. Yeah, I've done John Oates. Um, to me, I, I, I thought man, maybe it's, it's the kind of record for me that would be like a slow burn, mm -hmm. like uh, it would need like multiple plays for me. Right. Well, just I, because I, to me, to me, it's it's very it's, it's just such a departure. Yeah. From what I loved about those guys. I don't know if either of you have Wikipedia up, but I think there was four singles off that record. Uh, yes. One, two, three. I can't think of the fourth one. I know Out of Touch. I know Method of three. Modern Love. I know some, some things are better left some unsaid. Are better and left unsaid. Okay. Possession obsession. So there was four, oh, is that the fourth one? I yeah. Okay. okay. There's things about like uh, Tom Walk plays bass on it. So, I mean, it's just full of wonderful bass touches. Yeah. Of course, he's well, one of my favorite players. Well, it, th this record is definitely of the times to where absolutely the the drums are electronic drums. Yeah. And they're just pounding in your face. The one song I never want to hear again, and if I do, uh, I'll probably find Jerry and don't kill the DJ. Yeah, don't kill it. Yeah, go through the motion. I cannot stand that song. Oh, yeah. oh, <laughs> you know what I have next to it in Reading? What's that? No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> I literally do, Frank. Yeah, and I bet that was a big dance hall hit. I bet you in the discos and I all that stuff. Threw, yeah, I bet you threw a dance mix and just let that thing go. Yeah. But oh, it, it, it irritated me. It made me angry. Music should not make you angry. It should not. Uh, yeah. It shouldn't. But <laughs> I kind of felt the same way about that. It was like. I put no. It, it, like, no. Just trying, trying too hard. Yeah. yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But but I, I mean, I can appreciate him trying something different, right? right. Yeah. It's not going to hurt didn't work too well, but. Um, I, I couldn't, f what was the, what was the f dance on your knees? That's that just person. that musical intro. That's yeah. just that. Yeah. To me, I a couldn't figure out why that existed. It, it may have been filler. It may have been, let's introduce the record and what we're going to be doing. I, I don't know. And, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it kind of, it kind of leads into out of touch, but it's, it does. Uh, yeah, it kind of does. Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm not seeing, they could have just left it off. It wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt my feelings at all. And I don't want to be too rough, but out of if this is their twelfth album, this one probably is my twelfth favorite. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know because I'm mostly when it comes to those guys, I'm mostly like the singles, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, well, the, this is the thing for me. Daryl Hall is such a fantastic musician. And I felt like this was missing on this record because of all of the synths 
and other stuff that was overshadowing. You could hear his guitar playing. He's playing that, that, you know, rhythm that he plays, but it's just not as prominent in, as in their other records. Yeah. I mean, his, his voice, I think is still soulful as ever. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. He's got pipes. He's, he's got pipes. Voice. Yep. All right. Well, Jerry, what, what is your favorite tune off that album? Uh, some things are better left unsaid. Okay. I just, I just love that. Even though yeah. the other ones were radio friendly, I just have always liked that. I, I'm not mistaken. Some of these had to be on a on a soundtrack somewhere, also. Well, I remember that, seeing a lot of stuff on MTV back when MTV yeah. was MTV. Maybe that's know? what it was. Yeah. 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 And is there any song on there you don't, you don't want to hear again? Like going through the mo- yeah, I, the red ink going through the yeah. mo- I put no next to it. I gotcha. was like, what? 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 Yeah. Out of, yeah. Out of, <laughs> That's a good way to ask that question. Yeah. What? 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 <laughs> what what's the? Uh, oh, I, I, my favorite. I'd say "Out of Touch." The, you know, the the main radio hit that we knew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jim. To me, that's a classic single. Yeah. Yes. So. And would you say that was your favorite tune, Jim? Oh yeah. Yeah. That one in the closer. Gotcha. Possession obsession. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And I don't know if, if you have iTunes and they do the expanded version, they do a, yeah. uh, they got 12 uh, inch seven, yeah. yeah, seven and yeah, a half like a dance version. mix out of touch or whatever. I mean, it's already a dancey song. So. They all, yeah. Out of touch, method of modern love, possession, obsession, and dance on your knees, all close to seven minutes long. You know, get your money's worth. If you, I guess if you bought that. Yeah. So, all right. Well, there is Hall and Oates. Big bamboo. Big bamboo. I, I going through the motions. No, no, we're not. No. <laughs> uh, Jim, you've got the next pick on the next classic album. I do. But right now, how about some new music? Yeah, absolutely. So this uh, this week we have uh, the Merengues out of Kingston, Ontario, and that is not Ontario, California. What? Those who are maybe a little geographically challenged, but uh, our neighbors to the north. Uh, Amanda Pants, lead vocals. Ted Evans on kind of dual lead vocals and guitar. Uh, Jackson Baird on bass. Alistair Morrison on drums. They've got a brand new album out. It's their sophomore effort. I like saying that because then you sound like a true music journalist. Their there sophomore you go. effort. Uh-huh. Sophomore effort. Yes. Uh, Pavlova's Dog. And the song we're going to hear is called Royalty. Uh, So go ahead and drop the needle in the groove, Frank. Mm -hmm. Hey! 
All right, that song is Royalty, and you say the name of the band is the Meringues? Uh, Meringues. Meringues. Very good. I like the song. I think it suffers from a little bit too much reverb, though. Oh. I, I, I would love a little drier mix, just so I could hear all the instruments a little clearer. Maybe it's just on my end. I don't know, but uh, fun song. That has a lot going on. Yeah, you know, absolutely. That's a busy tune. And it starts wow. off right in your face. Jerry, what did you think? I like that little mystery keyboard popping in and out. Mm -hmm. just, uh, a hint, just a hint. Yeah, just a, just a nudge. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, uh, great lyrics, too. I got to cut myself listening to the words Yeah, for once, you know? And uh, <laughs> great, great musicianship, too. It was very raw, very loud, very in your face. Right. And... Uh, I like that guitar solo. Whatever he was running that through, that sound, I like that. There you go. So yeah, that's a that's a that's a good song. The uh, merengues, yeah. The merengues, not the meringues. Yeah. <laughs> it's not head down that path again. No, uh, that's not. All right, Jim, and where where can we find them at? Uh, find them on Bandcamp, and you can uh, you can see the video for that new single on YouTube. All right. All right. Go check it out. All great right. video. Great uh, visuals. Okay. Now, again, Bandcamp, and I'm sure you can find them other places as well. Yeah, they're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. They're everywhere. I, I was not expecting that when you sent it to me. Uh, you know, I was thinking, here we go. We're going to have some more pop punk, you know, happy go lucky stuff. This was. In your face, pop punk. Yes, <laughs> right up in it, yo. Yeah, yeah. It's certainly. I mean, it certainly has like an element of that, right? Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I enjoyed that. Okay, Jim, you have the next pick on the classic album and top three songs. What do you got for us? Okay, and classic album. You happened to mention Peter Frampton a little while ago. We're gonna do Frampton Comes Alive. Ooh, double Beautiful. album. Yeah. Lovely. Big old long one. And they, instead, uh, of writing, instead of writing Peter Frampton, I wrote "Love This Album." I wouldn't remember what it was. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and your and top three. top three from Humble Pie. Oh, stick it to oh, it! Oh, <laughs> go, Jimmy, go! Yeah, Great. you wow. see how that ties in. That yeah, is a direct tie. Very good. Pretty smooth there, Jaime. Pretty smooth. Yeah, nice. smooth as smooth as sandpaper. That's All right. it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I know this is a show about music, but I don't want to. Uh, this is very topical to the day, and I know you two enjoy this type of thing. Uh, the Los Angeles Dodgers are going. To the World Series. They are. And Jerry is going to... Which game are you going to? I'm not going to any. Did you, did you see those tickets? Somebody no, I thought you said you were going. Oh, I said, oh hell no. No. Oh. Somebody, <laughs> I think it was somebody posted what tickets were, and the cheapest thing you could get was like a GER. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm glad. I didn't, I didn't bother that. looking because I knew it was going to be crazy. I'm glad you oh, put that on there because... I thought the same thing too, Jerry, because you said we're going to the World Series, folks, and I almost put oh, which I game. Meant, oh, I'm. I guess. Are it you on their payroll? Like that? I read. No, yeah, I read no, that no. wrong. I'm sorry. I just meant the team is going. Gotcha. Yeah, I, I could. Like holy touch. cat, you got tickets. That's oh, fantastic. I couldn't. I, I, couldn't <laughs> I couldn't touch those seats. And plus, it's it's great to go to a venue, but you got so much better views at home. Yeah, I've been to a couple of those games with you know. The Statue of and, and you can't see anything. They got a you big miss, screen there, but you yeah. don't get reverse angles. You don't get the strike zone. Replay, you don't get yeah. – yeah. So when you want it. Yeah, I, I didn't mean for it to come off like that. Uh, that's that's all right. right. Yeah, I couldn't touch those tickets. So. In Ooh. 1978, <laughs> my mom took me to game two or oh, three, yeah. Yeah. Yankees and Dodgers at Dodger State. I believe uh, it was game two. Uh, yeah, Yankees won four to three. That's all I remember. Yeah. And the only reason I got to go is because my grandfather had passed away the year before. Would have been mm. him. He would have, him and my mom would have went. Oh. Uh, they were such Dodger fans. Yeah. I, I think the series that cemented my hate for uh for the Yankees. 
Oh, Reggie I, I Jackson. Went down. <laughs> Reggie Jackson. Three, single three him. And, and that one where he got in the way of the throw? Yeah. Where he kind of slid his hip out oh, and hit the him. Hip, hip the, shot. Yeah, yeah, the hip shot. Oh, I mm-hmm. can't. I, I, I don't. I know this is public. <laughs> I, 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 I hate him. <laughs> I, I, and it's from those games, guys. Right. The late 70s, early 80s. Finally, we won in 81. But I think they won in probably 70. I know it seems to me the late 70s. We were playing them in the World Series more than once. I'd, like I'd have to, I'd have to look it up. Yeah. 78 and 81 for sure. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Red Sox hate the Red Sox too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, I personally, I, you guys, I always go for the underdog. The Yankees yeah. have to be the underdog in this series. You um, think the way because now they got the they got the big three now they got Judge and uh, Giancarlo yeah. and uh, who's the other because they were I was watching some sport talk today and they're talking Juan about Soto yeah. Manny Soto yeah but, so thank you Juan Soto Juan Soto, Juan Soto, Soto excuse me yeah, yeah. I, and did I just, Soto find a home after leaving the Padres yes he did that, that New York is alive. built for New York was built for Juan Soto oh, yeah. or vice versa he's just living it up but wait till he goes into a slump. Two of the yeah, it goes <laughs> on. Oh, they'll man. tear them up. Yes, they two, will. Two of the largest payrolls in baseball. I mean, not yeah. Yeah, I think the Mets is even higher than the, the other yeah. two, but they haven't really put Otani's seven hundred million into effect yet. I don't. No, think he, that, he, he uh, he's got that thing put off till yeah. twenty years down the road. Well, he'll be like uh, Juan Juan Bonilla, I think, of the Mets. Bobby Maybe. Bobby Bonilla. Bobby. Yeah, still getting yeah, paid. I'm so bad still with get, names. Still getting paid till. Yeah, he's he's and I hasn't mean a played lot. in twenty years or whatever, but yeah, and he's he's getting checks millions. every oh yeah millions yeah I don't know what he signed but he sure did a good one. Oh, yeah. That's the kind of gig I need right yeah, there, right? Need, <laughs> yeah, you need his agent more than anything else. Well, something, right. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, I know I'm sure you guys will be rooting for the Dodgers. Uh, no, quietly, I don't. I hate to, you know, profess any love for any team because that automatically puts them in the toilet. I I just have that effect on the teams that I root for. But go Yankees, right? I, uh, I, I, Aaron Judge is just, he's, oh, that guy's a, I, that guy I like. Just, yeah. Yeah. He is. And he's such a nice man. And, and I got to say, you hear about Rizzo. Stuffy, yeah. Rizzo, too. I remember him from the Cubs. Yes. I mean, they don't have the villains like the no. Yankees of old. Oh, and they those... have the stigma of the Yankees of old, yeah. though, because that's the pinstripe, you know? Craig that's... Nettle, Craig Nettle's making them on. Un... Ungodly catches at third. Thurman Munson behind the plate. Thermo. But like I said, I, there's something about the Dodgers. I like the players. I think it's the fans, excluding you two and a few others. Their Thanks. fan, their <laughs> fan base. Time to get into a fight. Reeks. Yeah, it's it, taking the fun out of going to a game for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. anyways, go Yankees. You guys root for your Dodgers. Go See Luke. how that all comes out. Yep. Yep. I, and yeah. I will tell you the one thing I remember. When I was a kid, walking out of Dodger Stadium and in the parking lot, all they were selling were shirts that said the Yankees eat blue shit. And I didn't understand what that meant. I did not know <laughs> that was I didn't know if that was good or if yeah. that was bad. I didn't really yeah. know it. Then oh wait a minute, Dodgers are blue. Yankees can eat. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a rib on the on the Yankees. Okay. Yeah. I didn't get it as a kid though. All right. Hey Jerry, you have anything you want to add before we get out of here? Uh, yes, I do, Jim and Frank and folks on Conspiracy Land. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, we got Matt Jackson out of Houston, Texas, remember. We got the strange ones, and we have the merengues. And uh, it, it's all out there, folks. We really appreciate your support. Um, keep keep jamming. Keep rocking. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Again, thank you for subscribing. Tell a friend. Have them subscribe. Um, we are... Eight million nine hundred ninety-eight thousand of subscribers away from receiving an award from YouTube. So, oh sweet, we're we're Man. right on the cusp. We're right we around are. the corner. We're yeah. right on the edge. We're gonna fall <laughs> off it. So, uh, with that, you know, stay fresh, cheese bags. Yeah, Man. Jim. What about you? Well, you know the drill. You made it this far. You like anything you heard? Smash that like button. Subscribe. Ring the notification bell. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think of Hollow Notes. Tell us what you think of Big Bang Boom. Uh, what's your favorite Tom Jones tunes? Leave a little tribute to Paul Diano. Yes. Something nice. Yeah. Very good. Anyway, that's all I got. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, guys, Jim, why don't you take us on home? Shop is closed.